you again for joining this uh, interview today. Uh, first, could you explain and tell us a little bit about your company? We help consumers find the right size of clothing by uploading just two photos on their favorite e-commerce website. And after they upload two photos, they get the, they they receive the recommended size, right? So, 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 so uh, they receive size recommendation, and it means that if they buy a clothing item of clothing of this size, it, it would fit them perfectly, and they won't need to return it. And uh, and fa and fashion uh, a retailer that is selling this clothing will, in exchange, get better conversion, will reduce returns, and will get like better, like uh, will 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 eventually make more money. So that's what we do. Like, what's your funding status at the moment? It's first year of existence that we started to raise, firstly from my network, from angel investors I know, that because I, I, I know quite a lot of people because I had two companies before that, right? So I had some network already. Then uh, we raised uh, two seed rounds, and then just recently, just a, a bit more than months ago, we raised our Series A. Uh, and we in total, we raised eight, $11.2 million. What's your midterm goal um, in terms of either the funding or like a business expansion? This year we plan to grow also like at least four times, four or five times as we did last year. Uh, that's what we have. We begin to hire a lot of people. We just only this year we hired like 20 people in, in total, part in the, U, in the US, part in, in Ukraine, one developer in Spain. We are looking for people worldwide. Now location is not very important for us, not important at all, I would say, except sales and customer success teams that we are trying to build in New York. Because New, we consider New York as our US headquarters. And uh, so the goals are yeah, to, grow, find, uh, to grow our annual recurring revenue at least four or five times. This year, mm, we have some upcoming product launches. So actually, tomorrow we are launching our out-of-the-box uh, SaaS product for uniform manufacturing. It's like the first product of its kind in the in the world. And then we will launch uh, this also enterprise product for fashion e-commerce called Your Fit mm, around Q3 this year. And I think that will um, kind of like change the the, uh, dem the scope of how people buy the clothes, right? Or like actually building the clothes. So um, in your thoughts, what's your thoughts on like how this uh, kind of dynamic will change the entire experience? It's going to change the way how, how uh, brands actually produce clothes because uh, now, uh, like uh, until now and still today, uh, apparel manufacturing starts from the brand. Brand decides that it will launch new collection twice a year for this target audience, this style, etc. And then we have two collections per year, right? That's what we are used to. But it should start, and the shift is already on the way. It should, and COVID only accelerated it. So it should start from a consumer. The consumer has to dictate basically to determine what she needs and she should get it from the brand. And that vice versa, the brand should, the brand is now dictated, dictating what, what consumer needs. And it's not right. And so that's why, and we consider ourselves as a critical element in all this like supply chain how is that because i think in japan like when uh people hear about your story and the services they're gonna like think about zozo suits so um well one thing is that i think it's great that they, they can just you know accurately yeah. measure the body but like the downside of it is that they have to wear this costume let's say uh, comparing those what are the differences and then what are the similarities like that the, with those um uh tech and yours well the similarity is obviously that they were trying to solve the same problem but uh well our solution pro has proven to be much more feasible and scalable because really yeah their idea was smart i mean uh, out of the box i would say but this uh, a lot of friction really a lot of friction that it's what kills uh, the innovation it's a lot of friction if you need to get this 
costume if you yeah, like uh, to go to to get to, to to get the it shipped to your house to then to try it on and then to take for etc it's and uh, actually we have um, even better accuracy at the at the moment than those should had in the past because some of our clients did they compared the accuracy results right and they said that well, we are now more accurate so i think that the suit was a great example of the innovation and it was a great actually we we we, we like the fact that it attracted a lot of attention to the whole area of mobile body scanning right and so so we are grateful to them that they did it but uh, obviously we think that uh, it's much easier just to take two photos than also um, try on some physical stuff, you know. You had a, like a three company and that like a startup is like a lot of energy that you need. <laughs> what, what makes you keep um, doing the startups? I, I love it. It's just since day one. When I even was like 18, 18 years old, I started some just to do some like um, my first small projects. I treated it as a game. It was like a hobby, a game, basically. I was, that why, that's why it was much easier for me to go through some difficult times that always happen when you run a startup because I still treated it like as a game, right? And I. And uh, obviously now it's not a game, it's life. It's not work, it's life. Yeah, startup should be your life. Otherwise, just very hard to succeed here. You are chosen as 30 and 30 and boards. Uh, what's your background? If so my background is, uh, so I have a degree in uh, business and management in uh, uh, Ukrainian, uh, like in, uh, in one of the, I would say, most well-known Ukrainian universities. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I started to launch some small projects, with some small entrepreneurial ventures uh, when I was like 18 uh, at the university. But then um, my first real company, so my, my first real company was called Ad Center. It was uh, in, uh, so the company was doing like, a, it was this, a, a, a software for to optimize your online marketing campaigns. So it was in ad tech industry. I didn't take off uh, as well as I expected, but I, but I managed still to sell it. Like to, it was basically an equi-hire deal. I sold it to a US-based company called Verta Media. Then I completely switched to my second company, Clicky, which was more, it's still in ad tech industry. It was mobile advertising platform that helped app developers to promote their mobile applications and also to monetize them. Um, and the company grew, so I managed to grow it to 13 million annual revenue. I've sold a part of my shares to private equity fund. And then, and then I got excited. I felt that I'm a bit, um, I mean, I, 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 I'm not as excited about that tech industry as I was in the very beginning. I didn't feel that we are bringing, um, some like significant value to end consumers, to advertisers, to app developers. And uh, I started to think about something else. And it was a quite hard transition for me to go and start 3D Look and completely new industry for me and leaving my profitable, successful previous company. But I managed to do it 